Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. We want to thank, take a moment to welcome you to the worship hour. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We shall rejoice and be glad because God has blessed us in so many ways. It is a privilege to be able to come into the house of the Lord and lift up his holy name. So today, we pray that as you enter into the court's gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise, that you would join us in worshiping the Lord. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we give you glory this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we worship you on today. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We lift you up this morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we want to praise you on today. Hallelujah. Just because you are God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we just magnify you, dear Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. My soul cries out, hallelujah. My soul cries out, hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, dear Heavenly Father. God does not like you in all the heavens nor in the earth. Glory to your holy name. The Bible says, as the deer panteth after the water brook, huh? So does my soul pant after the Lord. Hallelujah. My soul thirsted for the Lord God Almighty, for the living God. Hallelujah. For there is a day, O oh God, when I shall come and appear before the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm going to join that number. Hallelujah. O oh Lord, they want to lift up your holy name. The Bible says, let everything. Hallelujah that had breath praise ye the lord i don't know if there's anybody that's living in the house today but if you got breath in your body can you give god a hand clap of praise can you give god a shout of glory can you lift up his name will you lift up his name will you lift up his name for he is good and worthy to be praised come on church come on church Let's call on the name of the Lord this morning. Come on, church. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do. I don't know what you came to do. But I know there's one, two, or three that came to praise the Lord. I know there may be four, five, or six that came to lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the called out of the called out. We've been called to the house of God to lift up his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. We bless you this morning, God. We bless you this morning, God. For there's none like you in all the heavens nor in the earth. We magnify the Lord this morning. For there's none like him in all the heavens nor in the earth some of you have been waiting on sunday morning well i want to tell you sunday morning is here amen and as sunday morning has come what have you come to do this morning what have you come to do this morning my prayers that you didn't come just to look around my prayers that you didn't come to judge what your brother or sisters got on but I pray that you came to praise the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 If you can't do anything else this morning, you can just say thank you. Because God put breath in your body. You can just say thank you. Because your eyes opened up this morning. You can just say thank you. Because God gave you clothes to wear. If you had breakfast this morning, you can just say thank you because you had food to eat. If you had a bed to sleep in last night, you can just say thank you. God, I was able to rest my head 
and my bed didn't become my cooling board. If you had a roof over your head, you could just say thank you, God, because you kept me out of the elements. If God protected you from hurt, harm, and danger last night, you can say thank you for your protection. I just want to give you something that you can shout about just in case you can't think of anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people of God have come together. And when all God's people get together, what a time, what a time. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I pray that you listen to the words of that song because it said people from every nation and tongue. Now this is the part that I really like. From generation to generation. Doesn't matter whether you're young, middle aged, or whether you're old. Everybody ought to praise God for who he is. Amen. Because he is the one that is good. Amen. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we're going to praise God. We're going to worship him because he is good. Amen. Not we are good, but he is the one that is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for all that he is doing and all that he has done because there's none like him in all the heavens nor in the earth. And I got to tell you, the Lord is saying something because over the last week, at least three times, maybe four, I've heard Psalm 24. Matter of fact, one night I preached it this week. Amen. Pre Praise God. Praise God. There it is. The Lord is blessing, and he is trying to tell us something. Amen. This morning, I want us all to get involved, and we're all going to read our scripture to together. And so that nobody's going to get lost, we're going to make sure that we put it up on the monitors, and we can all read from the book of Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 through 28. And I want to do this because a lot of times when we come to church, we don't engage. We just kind of sit there. But I want us to engage with the word of the Lord because in the word of the Lord, there is our healing. There is the power that we are seeking in life. In the word of the Lord, there is our deliverance. In the word of the Lord, there is our hope. And in the word of the Lord, there is our help. And as we read the word of the Lord, and we begin to speak God's word in the atmosphere, God begins to change the atmosphere. We talk about binding up enemies. Let's saturate the word of the, the atmosphere with the word of God. We can bind up the hand of the enemy. We talk about overcoming trials and tribulations. Let's saturate the atmosphere with the word of God so that we can let God and his word begin to make the change that we're looking for. Amen. So we'd all, if we could, if we can all stand we're going to read from Exodus chapter 14, and we're going to start at verse 13, and we're going to go down through verse 28. And many of you may already know this particular story, but we're going to see what God has to say regarding Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 through 28. And she's put it up on the screen so that we can all read it together from the New King James Version. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us read. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord says to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. 
and I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow me. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the angel of the glory, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all that night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. And he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, not so much as one of them remained. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. When we read that word, the Lord said, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then in verse 15, the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground throughout the midst of the sea. I'd like to speak with you today from the topic of faith that works. A faith that works. Stay with me. A faith that works. Amen. Let us all bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you now in the name of your son Jesus to give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise, and just to thank you for your multitude of blessings. As we are gathered here in this place, O oh God, I pray that you would begin to speak and that you would give us all ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what thus saith the Lord. These and many other things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. We want to give all glory and honor and praise to Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life. And to you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, it's good to be able to stand up before you one more time and to be able to share a word with you. 
Because when we look in life, we know that sometimes we face crises in life. And when we are facing crises, we need something to hold on to. We've all heard the saying, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And if you would look in a dictionary uh, definition of faith, you would find that faith in the context of religion is a strong belief in God and the doctrines that he teaches. And I want, I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that faith is more than just a belief. Because faith is a belief that leads to action. Amen. Faith is a belief that leads to action. You read James 2 and 26, and you'll find that that particular scripture says, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. They, James talks about demonstrating our faith by our works. And just as faith has multiple meanings, the belief in God and actual faith, action that is based on our faith, so does the word works, a faith that works. If we look at what that word works, the key in the message of the title of faith that works, works would mean the effective outcome of a plan. In other words, you put together a plan to go on vacation. As you are planning, you lay out the cost of the hotel, the airfare, all of the meals that you're going to get, and you go on vacation, and when you go on vacation, you had a good time. And you said, man, my plan worked. But then on the other hand, works also involves a physical or mental activity, and because of that physical or mental activity, you achieve the desired result. My wife already told me that I'm going to have to engage in the physical activity of cutting the grass so we'll have a manicured lawn. So when I cut that grass and the lawn looks manicured, the work that I did, the physical activity, it works. So if we put those things together, the word faith and the word works, we have a belief that leads to some type of action. A belief that leads to some type of action. And I know that everybody comes to church and you just want to sit down on your do nothing and do nothing. Amen. But that's not what God calls us to do. I know it's not what God calls us to do because when you look in our text, you find that the Israelites had been freed from 430 plus years of slavery in Egypt. And now there are 2 million people that are out at the sea. And as they are out at the sea, all of a sudden, now somebody go with me, they look over the horizon. And when they look over the horizon, they see dust rising up. And they know that dust is rising up because Pharaoh and his army are coming to get them. They know that that dust is rising up because even though Pharaoh had let them go over a week ago, now Pharaoh has changed his mind and he's coming to get them. If you were in that company and you knew that you didn't know how to fight because all you knew how to do was be a slave, you didn't have any weapons. But Pharaoh is coming with over 600 chariots and all of his army. Tell me how you would feel. The Bible says that they were so afraid. In other words, they were terrified of what was getting ready to happen. They were terrified because all they could see was Pharaoh coming at them. The sea behind them and they didn't have a way of escape. But in response to the trouble, the Israelites had to use a faith that works. 
See, they began to work their faith because they began to cry out to the Lord God Almighty. They began to cry out for God to help them. But God in turn used a faith that works because God told them there were some things that they had to do. They had a faith that works. God was going to secure their deliverance, but they had to be involved in the deliverance that was going to come their way. See, if we are going to have a faith that works, we have to have a faith in God that is greater than our fear. If we're going to have a faith that works, we have to have a faith in God that requires us to wait on the Lord. If we're going to have a faith that works, we have to have a faith in God that requires us to take action. There's a lot of requirements in there. But I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, in the time of crisis, a strong and an active faith will help us stay calm because we'll be able to follow the words of Moses. When Moses told the people to stand still and behold the salvation of the Lord. But not only did he say stand still, he said the Lord will fight your battle for you. It's good that God will fight our battle for us because some of us don't even know how to hold up our fist to block a blow. Thank God he'll fight our battle for us. Because we know that some of us are more passive than we are aggressive. And the devil will beat us up from the bottom of our feet to the top of our head if we had to fight the battle. Moses said, the Lord shall fight your battle for us. But if we're going to have a faith that works and if we're going to be able to get the deliverance that we need, our faith must be greater than our fear. See, the Israelites, they were in a tight situation. The power of the Egyptian army was bearing down on them, and, and Pharaoh was determined to take away the freedom that God had given them just over a week ago. And as the people are sitting with their back to the sea and the enemy's getting closer and closer, the only thing that they can think of, I'm getting ready to die. I'm getting ready to die out here in this wilderness. And the more they think about the fact that they're getting ready to die in the wilderness, they begin to make all kinds of accusations against Moses and God. You brought us out of the land of Egypt. You let us, you took us away from the flesh pots in Egypt. You did all of this. We told you to leave us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, but you brought us out here to die. They accused Moses. And they accused God. And they began to distort their vision of what life was really like when they were in Egypt. They began to start, distort their vision about the struggles they faced while they were slaves in Egypt. My brothers and my sisters, I got to tell you, all of us have struggles in this life. And some of the struggles are so great that they have caused us to have a crisis of faith. If you've been sick for more than two days, it could cause you to have a crisis of faith. If you've gotten behind all in your finances and you're wondering how you're going to catch up, it could cause you to have a crisis of faith. If there's trouble in your home, and that trouble seems to be going on and on and on, it could cause you to have a crisis of faith. And when we begin to have a crisis of faith, we begin to, to wonder if God is still working in our lives or not. Instead of being able to feel the Lord, the joy of the Lord as our strength, the only thing that we can feel is the hurt of physical and emotional affliction. Instead of rejoicing in the provision and presence of God, we begin to cry out, how long, God, will I struggle, struggle through these financial situations? How long, Lord, will you let loneliness be my only friend? How long, God, am I going to be confined to this, this sick bed? We are struggling and we're having a crisis of faith. But when we feel 
these struggles and when we face all of the trials that are coming our way, we can heed the word of Moses where Moses said, fear ye not. If we're not going to fear, we have to turn to the word of God because it's in the word of God that we will be able to bolster our faith so we don't succumb to the pressures that come along with the fear. You see, Psalm 99 says, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. If you're going through a time of trouble, you need something to hold on to. Whenever you make a phone call and don't nobody answer the phone, you need something to hold on to. Whenever you look at your bank account, whether it's online or you go down to the bank and it says zeros, you need something to hold on to. When folks are knocking on your door trying to collect for money that you don't have, you need something to hold on to. The Bible says that the Lord is a refuge, that the Lord is a stronghold in times of trouble. See, Moses saw the Egyptian army just like everybody else did. But yet Moses cried out to the Lord. He didn't give in to the trouble. He decided to let God be his hiding place. He decided to turn to the Lord and give the trouble and the trials and the tribulation to the Lord. Moses said, God, you said you're going to be my stronghold. I need a stronghold right now. Moses said, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I see the dust coming up over the horizon. God, I know that is the Egyptians are coming up over the horizon. God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I need you to do something right now. Somebody's been crying out all this week, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I need you to do something for me right now. God, I need you to walk. I'm trying to walk a walk of faith, God, but my steps are getting heavier and heavier every day. God, I'm at my wit's end. God, I need you to do something because of the trouble that's in my life. So I want to tell somebody, the blessings of faith will kick in if you're determined to trust God. I said the blessings of faith will kick in if you are determined to trust God. But you not only got to be determined to trust God, you got to be able to wait on God in spite of your trouble. See, faith leads us to wait on God. The reality of the situation is that trusting and waiting on God go hand in hand. Moses said for the people, he said, be still. Be still. He said, don't fear, be still. I'm looking over the horizon and I see dust coming over the horizon. Moses, you must be crazy. You talking about not be afraid and be still. Moses, I, I see the tip of the spears coming over the horizon. And you talk about be still and not be afraid. Moses, that sounds like foolishness to me. See, my brothers and my sisters, we don't always understand why God tells us to do the things that we do. We don't always understand because just when it looks like death, poverty, and sickness is going to take us out, God says, stand still. God says, I know that you want to run, stand still. God says, I know that you want to get anxious, stand still. God says, I know you want to try to go out and do something impetuous, but stand still. And see, when God is saying stand still, what he's really telling us to do is be calm. Be calm in the midst of all of the foolishness that is going on. Be calm in all of the midst of the struggle that you're going through. Don't let your blood pressure rise to the point where it's going to send you to the hospital. God said, be calm and, and, and just wait on me. Wait on me. What you mean, God? Tomorrow, everything is due, God. I don't know what I'm going to do. God said, be calm. Stand still and behold the salvation of the Lord. See, we don't always understand 
uh, God's ways because the Lord says that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. See, God does things a little bit differently than the way that you and I do them. God does things in his own time and God does things in his own way and even though God may do things in his own time I want you to know he's always right on time amen hallelujah it may not be in your time but he is always going to be right on time amen the Bible told the Bible says that God didn't allow the Israelites to be running away and and scattering because Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I got to pause for a moment. Husbands and wives, when things are not going right in your relationship, don't choose to run this way or that way. Run together and begin to pray. Don't choose to separate, but stay together and call on the name of the Lord. Pick up a word and start to read the word together and let God minister to your situation. Whatever your situation is, let God minister to your situation. God has something for somebody in here. I don't know who that's for. But God said, don't run away from the situation. God says, stand fast and behold the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when God told Moses to tell the people to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, God wanted him to know, wanted them to know, I'm getting ready to show you something that you've never, ever seen before. I'm getting ready to show you something that's going to blow your mind. See, what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to destroy one of the mightiest armies of the world. I'm not going to use a slingshot. I'm not going to use a bow and arrow. I'm not going to use a spear. I'm not going to use a chariot. But I have my own way of dealing with these people. My brothers and sisters, we serve a God who is powerful. We serve a God who doesn't always work in conventional ways to deliver us from our problems. We can stand still because when we remember who God is, when we remember who God is, we can stand still because God is the one who created the heavens and the earth by just saying, let there be. We can stand still when we remember in the lives of the Israelites how God made fire come down from heaven. We can stand still for when we remember in the lives of the Israelites when they were thirsting for water, God made water come out of a rock. We can stand still when two million people were hungry, God fed them with manna from heaven. We can stand still because we serve a God who is well able. Our God fed 5,000 people with two loaves, uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. We can stand still because our God made the sun and the moon stand still while Joshua was fighting a battle. God made everything stop. God held time and place so Joshua could win the battle. We can trust our God because our God made demons come out of a demoniac who was filled with legion by just a word of saying, let him go. We have a God who is able, and God is able to deliver us via unconventional means. We can stand still and trust in the Lord. But not only do we not let our fear overcome our faith, not only do we wait on the Lord, but our faith can lead us to take action. See, we got to remember, brothers and sisters, that a key point about the Israelites' experience at the Red Sea is the call for action. The people prayed, 
when they were in trouble. And you know how we do? We pray. Somebody asks us to do it, we say, let me pray about it. Then they come back again and they say, what are you doing? I'm still praying about it. Then they come back again and say, what are you doing? I'm still praying about it. You know you done heard from God. You know God has already answered your prayer. But you walking around in fear and not doing what God has said to do. God said to the people, I done heard your prayer. Now I'm answering your prayer. Now it's time for you to take action. Now it's time for you to move forward. What do you mean, God? Ain't nothing there but the Red Sea. If we move forward, we're going to drown. But don't you know that our God is well able to make sure that you don't drown? If God has told you to move forward into the Red Sea, when Moses was praying, God says, why are you crying out to me? Stop all that crying. Lift up your staff. When you lift up your staff, tell them people to go forward. When you lift up your staff, then I'm going to make the mighty winds blow. When you lift up your staff, I'm going to dry up the ground. When you lift up your staff, the water will run like a heap. When you lift up your staff, the pillar of cloud that's standing in front of you is going to go behind you. And when it goes behind you, it's going to be so dark that the Egyptians won't see. But I'll make light for you and my people to be able to go through the Red Sea on dry ground. Lift up your staff and move forward. It's time to take action. God is speaking to somebody. He's told somebody it's time to take action. God is speaking to somebody. He's told somebody, I've already heard your prayer. You know I done heard your prayer. I've already told you what I want you to do. Why are you still sitting around on your do nothing and doing nothing? It's time to get up and get moving. Hallelujah. I've already told you what doctor to go to. Go to that doctor. I've already told you how, what resume to fill out. Go fill out that resume and apply for that job. I've already told you what doors are open for you. Go on and walk through the door and stop sitting back and doing nothing prayer is always appropriate but after a while God says stop praying and get up and start moving why after a while God is saying I've told you I've talked to you God is saying it's time to stop saying I'm going to pray about it it's time to activate your faith because we know that faith without works is dead what kind of faith do you have saints do you have a living faith do you have an active faith and somebody said pastor you didn't call out my situation well if you said that you know God has already given you an answer for your situation now move and do what God God said to do fear is nothing more than a barrier to your blessing hesitation is nothing more than a barrier to your blessing failure is nothing more than a barrier to your blessing amen put one foot in front of the other and start doing what God said to do stop walking around claiming sickness hallelujah when God has already proclaimed healing amen speak healing over your life amen anoint yourself pray over yourself let God minister to you in the midst of your affliction amen stop claiming all this stuff that everybody else tries to put on you and claim what God has given you in his holy and divine word it's time to stand up it's time to get moving it's time to take some action See, there's several people in the Bible that could not have been blessed unless they took action. There was a Syrian general, general by the name of Naaman and a Hebrew slave girl. That's right, bring him to the altar, baby. Amen, we'll take him as young as we can get him. Amen, praise God. Hebrew slave girl said, there's a prophet down in Israel who can heal you. So he went to the prophet down in Israel to Elijah. And Elijah told him to go to the Jordan 
And he said, why in the world do I need to go to the Jordan? Why can't I go to the far part of the Abana River? Because those are cleaner. Here he is. He's the one with leprosy. And God's trying to give him deliverance and healing. And he wants to tell the prophet of God what to do. Isn't that what we do? We always want to tell God what to do because it doesn't fit. God's prescription for our lives does not fit what we think it ought to be. But when he went to the Jordan River and he dipped down in the Jordan River, the Bible says that after he dipped down in the Jordan River, the leprosy left him and his baby and his skin became as smooth as a baby's skin. There was another man who was sitting at a gate called Beautiful. And Peter and John came to him and he was a beggar. And he was lame from birth. And they told him, they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. He said, rise up and walk. And the man tried to stand up. Even though he had never walked, he tried to stand up because they told him to stand up. And when he stood up, his bones got strong and he was able to walk. There were ten lepers that came to Jesus. And Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And when they started walking, the closer they got to the temple, the cleaner their skin got. And they ended up being healed because they followed the direction that Jesus had already given them. What direction is God giving you on today? What direction? Where is God leading you to? What is God calling you to do? What is it that God wants to bless you to do? But you and I have to take action. Amen. We have to put our faith in the action in order for us to receive the blessing that God has chosen to give us. Church, church, listen to me, church, wake up out of your stupor, listen to me, church, wake up out of your slumber, listen to me, church, wake up out of lethargicness and, and apathy, listen to me, church. It's time for us to get busy. Souls are being lost every day. Souls are going to hell every day. We need to be preaching and teaching the word of God. Jesus has equipped those of us who have been saved with the word of God to proclaim the word of God. And as God is calling each of us to put our faith in action, one of the key things that we have to have is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Without a relationship with Jesus Christ, we'll all be lost. God has worked so hard. When he delivered the people of Israel from Egypt, God didn't take them out to die. God took them out to bless them. When Jesus died on the cross at Calvary, God didn't mean for us to be a people who were powerless and made to feel worthless like the enemy wants to make us feel. God wants us to know that as we have Jesus Christ, we are children of the living God. We are saved and he sanctifies us through the power and the inner working of the Holy Spirit. Father, we come down in the name of your son, Jesus, and we want to give you glory, we want to give you honor, and we want to give you praise. We want to thank you for all you've done and all you're doing. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to have a faith that works, dear Lord God. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be uh, more, walk more in faith than we do in fear. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be able to walk and wait on you. And help us, dear Heavenly Father, to allow our faith to lead us to action. God, we want to give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise these and many other things we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's children join in together and we sing. Our God, our God is so good and so worthy to be praised. If you will trust him, God will show us some amazing things. 
if you will walk with him, God will fill us full of hope. God will fill us full of peace. God will fill us full of strength. If we will be obedient to him, God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us our blessings. We won't have room enough to receive. I love the fact that God gives us an opportunity to partner with him in ministry. That's why we talk about putting faith in action. We want our faith not to just be something that is an intellectual action, but we want our faith to be something where we are making a difference, making a change. We put our faith in action because we love the Lord and he loves us. My brothers and sisters, thank you for being here with us today. We pray that there was something said or done that will encourage you. Additionally, if you're ever here in San Angelo, we would love to have the opportunity to love on you. Therefore, we invite you to come to any of our worship services. You'll see those services on the screen. Feel free to drop by 721 West 19th Street, Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, at any of our services, and let us rejoice and praise the Lord together. Our prayer is that God will bless you and that God will keep you. The Lord loves you, and so do we. Have a blessed day. You fought for me.